In this video, I've got MK4S upgrade box and I have accelerometer. So I'm going to unpack all these boxes and then we're going to install these upgrades to my current MK4, which I've upgraded from uh, original PTG parts to ABS plus parts. I have also installed squash ball feed. I've got six of them here. So that's why I got an accelerometer. So hopefully we can tweak the input shaper settings with it. And then I made some changes to enclosure. Like I have now kind of custom made PTFE feed tube. Um, so we're gonna install all this and see if it's actually worth it. Something about Prusa that makes their products just seem so straightforward, simple. And what I appreciate is that they do not use any bubble wraps or plastics for packaging. So just recycled cardboard, Harry Bowes 3D printing handbook with MK4S on the cover. I thank you from Prusa. Here we have same with accelerometer, no bullshit, just good stuff. Let's have a look what's in these boxes. This pretty much is the contents of accelerometer box. So we have accelerometer chip. We've got two cables. We've got brackets for it. Printed in PETG. And we've got sticker. And then on the paper here, we have disclaimer, we have safety instructions, we have maintenance section, and maybe just one thing to note is that you can use accelerometer not only with MK4S, but with all these printers starting from MK3.5. So it's still a good uh, thing to have, I think, in your toolbox. MK4S upgrade box includes all of these what you see here on my desk and let's just go one by one so in this bag we have an extruder parts all these parts are printed from pccf prusa's own filament they seem quite good quality it's like they're quite clean i would say seems like layer height is maybe 0.3 but layer lines barely visible. Maybe on this part you can see a little bit better. So, you know, they probably go with speed. So um, don't expect your parts to be like flawless. For that, you need to reprint parts uh, by yourself. So PCCF and extruder parts. Then we have here, um, Y carriage parts. So basically these uh, get very hot. So they decided that they need to replace PTG parts with these ones. Obviously the extruder parts, some of them get hot too. That's why PCCF. Then we have, to my surprise, a new extruder cover. And why to my surprise? Because this is PA66, that's nylon. So very nice cover. Uh, I'm not gonna use it because I reprinted everything um, by myself from ABS plus. I want to keep the colors consistent. So this is to calibrate gears. And this is PTG part. This is uh, also PTG. So all these black parts that are PTG are jet black also from Prusa. Uh, PCCF and extruder parts. Yeah, quite nice. Then we have a new fan holder bracket. That's metal powder coated metal, uh, quite sturdy. Then we have cover for display, that's MK4S. And that one is ABS, so it's quite nice to touch. Uh, there's also back plate for it, also ABS. And even the knob is inject injection molded, so that's also ABS, so quite interesting. Uh, what else do we have? We have a uh, new Wi-Fi cover and new NFC cover. These are also PTG. Then the main cream of the crop are in the box, inside the box. So we have one extruder sock. We have a new fan. We have one brass nozzle. 0.4 millimeter so that's CHT so I suppose that means high flow 
although I'll later show you a comparison with the um, E3D one, I, I've got one um, Obsidian one, so we can compare later. Uh, then this is um, a new Wi-Fi module chip. So hopefully now transfer speeds between Prusa Connect and printer will actually be usable. And then we have NFC chip. This is very nice. So all of these parts, out of all of these parts, some people say you're not going to buy the upgrade kit because you don't need them, most of them. That's true because what you really need is you need this part and you need the fan. Uh, these things, this chip, this chip. So pretty much what's in this box. You don't even need to buy a new nozzle because you can use your old V6 Prusa nozzles or if you're using a V6 adapter. So pretty much some people said that they're going to just wait for spare parts to become available so that they can buy these parts separately cheaper. Uh, yeah, the reason why I sort of agree with them is because all these parts you can print. So this is nice, but this is really not necessary. Um, this you also obviously need to buy. Uh, these parts also decoration. They really don't serve any other function apart from being nice. So what I printed here is a set of um, ABS plus parts. I used 0.15 millimeter for layer height, so they are actually better, in my opinion, than the process, uh, the ones that Prusa provided. Uh, not all parts printed like incredibly perfect for me, because I was also experimenting with setting. This this uh, this ABS is from Futura's uh, Titan X. Uh, my other parts for printer are printed from Basque's uh, Ultra Fuse. ABS plus so it's a different type of ABS's but they're both uh, off-white so yeah I printed these at 100.3% um, scale so to compensate for the shrinkage you can check my other video about shrinkage compensation so yeah I think um, I'll now slowly start to install these upgrades and maybe I'll have a look if I can install this one first because uh, my one is out of the enclosure and I've heard some people saying that it's so hard to do because um, you sort of need to print extra parts so uh, you, have to, you have to print uh, some brackets so hopefully these brackets will help me mount this on the enclosure so I'll start from that and I forgot to mention that there's also a bag of fasteners so all the sort of bolts and then you have a sticker so so here I have a whole bunch of Prusa nozzles and I'll just tell you what the differences are. So this is original um, 0 0.4 brass nozzle that comes with your MK4. Here you can even see the um, inscription of it. 0.4 nozzle, right? This is the CHT, the high flow nozzle from Prusa that comes with MK4S upgrade. And to my surprise, the only visible difference is this little uh, imprint on the edge of the nozzle if you can see it. some sort of uh, yeah inscription that's the only difference between these two nozzles because this one has a small dot on it and dot doesn't represent uh, like the nozzle size so this is 0.4 both of them and they look absolutely identical and look so for instance this is obsidian, not high flow, just a regular one, 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So like in comparison, how thicker that is, yeah? And what is really weird is that this is obsidian, high flow Prusa nozzle, also 0.4. So technically these two nozzles are the same, but just look at the thickness of the head for this one. This is a beast. This is like thick. This thing is definitely going to melt filament faster than this one. Maybe I'm wrong. And uh, you guys just can tell me in the comments what you think. But I just find it hard to understand how can you make high flow nozzle in the same four factor as non high flow. And uh, yeah, like I don't know what they do inside of it. I couldn't find any data so in my mind like this makes sense this I, it also maybe makes sense but I just can't understand 
So yeah, that's the difference between the nozzles from Prusa and from E3D. And I think that E3D makes Prusa nozzles because look, even the packaging is kind of same. So the only thing is the color. You see, like, this is Prusa, this is Prusa. I ordered these from Prusa. And these are E3D, so kind of same, no? So as you can see, I have already upgraded LCD cover. Now both of the sides are protected from accidental contact, so as opposed to the initial original one. So this is a nice addition, actually. But what I don't really like is that now in order to install it on the enclosure, you need to add these hooks in the back and it's kind of maybe it's just my sloppy job but it's hard to get them uh, tightened properly so there's a small gap in between um, so I'll just show you how it looks once it's attached so the issue here is that if you don't install these hooks um, the LCD cover will be higher than the door and that means that the door will not open or will not close so and once you install these hooks it's kind of a little bit flimsy you know that's what i don't like about it so i might need to redesign this part by myself to maybe make it work a little bit sturdier and also kind of like the gap now between the lcd cover is way more than the gap from the bottom so it just seems like whenever they design stuff they don't really mind details that much which is a bit annoying so basically they could have just made it a little bit shorter and you know centered this up a little bit so yeah it's a little bit disappointing so you always have to kind of do a bit of aftermarket thinking with these things but of course if it's just installed on the mk4s then you won't have any issues at all so mk4 is out of the enclosure and i'll just uh, run you through a quick updates that i made so i installed six of these squash ball feet uh, i did that mainly for the purpose of reducing the vibration noise which was uh, quite loud uh, I also reduced belt tension on this a little bit, but now I'm going to bring it back to the medium. Um, and yeah, obviously I reprinted parts. My parts are reprinted using four layers. I use 40% uh, grid infill. So they are a bit heavier than the standard Prusa ones. So I think that's where the benefits of um, recalibrating input shaper will um, hopefully give some positive results. Yeah, I installed this uh, little therm thermometer bracket, so um, you can download it from printables too. And then that uh, helps to monitor our temperature a little bit better. So obviously, and before I start installing the upgrades, I'm going to do a bit of maintenance. So just a quick one on the maintenance uh, and some tip on that. So I really like to use um, toothbrush. I'm just using old toothbrush, which I clean. And toothbrush is ideal to clean the trapezoidal, mm, this vertical trapezoidal extrusions. Um, and um, obviously I'm gonna remove all the grease from the, uh, these bars and re-lubricate them, uh, check belt tension for X and Y. And uh, against process advice, I always lubricate um, the trapezoid just a little bit. And why I do that? Because a trapezoid should be ideally vertical so that it sits bang on in the middle of this part and this part right here but uh, in reality it's very hard to get them very like perpendicular and that's where this bit comes in which kind of centers it uh, within this part and uh, because these four bolts they will adjust the direction of uh, this bolt Basically, so theoretically, Pusa says that you know, if you want to control the angle of it, you know, loosen maybe these a little bit, then it will tilt, or you know, uh, loosen you know some of them so that you have the perfect vertical position. But in reality, it's very hard to do. So I still like to keep them kind of tight, but that's why I add just a little bit grease on this one, and I use for for example super loop. But obviously, maybe this is not the only one that you can use, as long as it's not too liquidy. So. It shouldn't drip because if it drips the oil will get in the motor and th there will be a problem 
So for example, if you have, uh, Bamboo Labs also does that by default, Pusa somehow advises not to do it, but I find it helps a little bit because if you don't, then you know it can start making a little bit of a noise and also I think it's just, uh, it just helps it run smoother. So I'll first do the upgrade, uh, the cleaning, and uh, later on I'll start with the update. So also need to use, uh, uh, I'll use compressed air to blow dust out of this. So yeah, tighten the, uh, check the pressure of the uh, bolts, but I don't think there will be a lot of work because uh, printing Prusa at MK4 in ABS really did help me to maintain the bolt tension inside. So pretty much I really don't need to do it. I'm just gonna double check, but I think uh, it should be all in place. So of course, mistake uh, number one, uh, I didn't unload my filament before starting all this. Never forget to do this because uh, in order to replace uh, part cooling fan, you will need to, I think, take all this extruder block out to just uh, fix the uh, metal fixture. And also when you do the maintenance, you need to open this lever and blow it out with also hot air to clean all the debris. So there you go, don't make the same mistake as I did. Once filament is unloaded, I also like to just crank the nozzle temperature all the way up. So in this case, it's gonna be 290. And then I just use cotton um, tissue to clean the nozzle. So as long as you fold it like, you know, two times, um, it's perfectly fine. So I'll keep it uh, hot a little bit so that the remaining bits drip out of it and then I'll clean it and then that's gonna be the beginning of the maintenance procedure. So I've cleaned the printer, I have tightened bolts. Uh, some of the bolts that are in the ABS in the end of the day still need a tightening, but the bolts that I replaced in the frame were like solid, so no adjustments here. I've got all the parts now for the extruders upgrade and I'm going to start from that. So uh, covers already removed. Um, so this is how it looks like original MK4 and in the next shot it's hopefully going to be all upgraded. So I have the fan holder installed already. Everything's going pretty well so far and before I install this part new part cooler I just want to take a moment to compare it with the old one. So as you see, this is the old one. And this beautiful part cooling fan is the new one. So I would say quite a significant improvement. Okay. And then it's very, very satisfying to just work on this, to install it. And I'll show you how it looks in just a second. And there it is, new part cooling fan. How beautiful it looks in this off-white ABS. I can't wait to see how it's going to look when it's in action. But I just wanted to say that I'm not going to use the Prusa's uh, high flow nozzle uh, simply because I want to kind of finish off this um, obsidian. I'm not going for crazy printing speeds. So to be honest, um, it's not something that's most important to me. The quality is. Um, and this is the um, aftermarket um, copper. Uh, heater block that I've been using for a while. So just wanted to show you how it uh, preserved So obviously after a while when you're using silicon sock um, You have this sort of residue buildup. I think it's maybe because of the silicon melting slightly so I can uh, clean it off of the heater block But unfortunately, I couldn't reuse my old silicon sock although from the outside it looked totally fine but from the inside it had that gunk that I couldn't clean out but uh, so yeah, I'll just use the one that's included in process box. So everything's good. And this is it. This is how a completed next shooter looks like. Really aggressive. Really chunky. Somewhat like MK3 style. 
My opinion is that when they designed Prus MK4, they originally had this design in mind. Uh, keeping in mind all the connections like NFC and improved Wi-Fi module. They have slots in the love board, so it was originally designed to be like this. It's uh, Of course for marketing, they had to do this like step by step. So I think with this upgrade, it will unlock full potential of this machine. And I can't imagine if they're gonna come up with any more updates to it, but I guess time will tell. So now I just need to finish electronics upgrade and then we can start it and test it. Next, I'm going to be installing NFC module, upgraded Wi-Fi module, and um, accelerometer also going to plug into this one later. So this is where accelerometer cable going to be plugged in and then it's going to be wired into this module. And there's also a small slot for NFC. It's uh, just easier to show it on the screen. So here is where they designed the little pin. So there's a small cable included for this guy to connect. So yeah, I'll be upgrading these ones. And that's what I mean when they designed MK4. They had all of this in mind already. All the electronics have been connected. So as you see, NFC uh, chip is uh, glued by a 3M adhesive tape to the cover. Then there's a little cable leading to the X body board. So that was the most tedious task, I would say, to connect that little cable. Then this black one here is the accelerometer and it goes out and connects into this Wi-Fi module. So I now just need to cover them and hopefully job done. The upgrade is now complete, at least the hardware part of it. I just lubricated the rods, so it's ready to go back into the enclosure. And I think first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just run a test of some prints. And after that, I'm going to try to use the accelerometer to tweak the input shape parameters and print the same thing again so that, uh, to, so that we can compare the, is there any noticeable difference in the print quality. I have just started input shape calibration. Let's see how it goes.